What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So this video is gonna be very heavy on the criticism on Diablo 4, because we're gonna be going over the top eight things that I hate about this game. It all kind of started off with uh, someone in the Diablo community, starting off with Debrunsky with the five things that he hated about the game, then it became the top six things by Mr. Llama, then it became the top seven things by Cooley, so we're gonna be doing the top eight things that I hate about Diablo 4 in its current state. Now, let me go ahead and start off by going over the complexity and going over kind of a lot of things in this one point, but the whole point comes down to what does Diablo 4 do that's brand new in the action RPG genre that blows us away. I'm talking about innovative, game-changing, brand new things that really excite us to play this brand new game, other than it being, of course, uh, in the Diablo series, a brand new game. So let me go ahead and start off to kind of explain what I mean by this, is if you've played Diablo 3, you're probably familiar with the Canaius Cube. This is a really cool form of an end game content to experience that offers a lot of build complexity, um, where it allows you to basically get an item and make it so you can have the item without even equipping it. And you can do it on three different pieces of gear slots, allowing other builds to emerge out of this that normally wouldn't be possible and I think it's one of the coolest things that I've ever seen in any action RPG right this is a really cool system now if we go to other action RPGs that are uh, you know uh, relevant in the uh, action RPG space, uh, in Path of Exile, not only do we have that insanely big skill tree, but we have what's called Cluster Jewels. Cluster Jewels are actually very similar, uh, as well as Timeless Jewels. They're in a similar mechanic to what Diablo 4 is offering that is in the brand new Paragon system. Basically, what it comes down to, if you haven't played Path of Exile, is you can extend your skill tree further, allowing you to have uh, certain abilities or uh, modifiers that add completely new gameplay mechanics that you can build builds around very, very specific things like Unhollowed Palm or any of these weird things that are only available to Cluster Jewels, which are an item that you have to get and sock into your skill tree, uh, which Again, Diablo 4 kind of has a, a system similar to it. If we go to Torchlight, there's a pet system where you can have uh, three pets. You socket your pets inside of a pet skill tree, and depending on what pet you socket in, it modifies the skill, and you can flip the skill backwards to have a completely different skill. This is the kind of stuff that I'm looking for when I think of Diablo 4. I want to see something crazy game-breaking. And when we first got the glimpse of the Paragon board, I was super, super excited. Now, I was also looking at uh, forms of other, like, brand new things that are in other action RPGs. Uh, I'm sure some of you guys have probably tried out Lost Ark, or maybe you've even played, like, Diablo Immortal, where we had the Hello Query. That was another system where I was like, wow, this is really cool. Now, I want to go ahead and show off briefly what the Paragon system kind of looks like. So, here is the, uh, the pre-alpha version of the Paragon board that you can actually rotate. So, how it works is you unlock the Paragon uh, board, and you start to put in points in every single single one of these little circles. Now, as you progress, there's going to be bigger nodes that can completely modify things in maybe a radius or give you a big benefit. And because this board can be rotated, you can get certain things earlier than later because you can get multiple Paragon boards by putting enough points at the start of a door towards the end of the door, you can unlock another Paragon board. And uh, depending on the class you play, there's different Paragon boards that allow you to do different things. Now, when I first saw this, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm blown away. I was super excited. But the thing that makes this exciting is what are these stat points that we're putting into, right? Does it completely change up the end game content experience uh, once we unlock this? Uh, but when looking further into it, as far as what the heck are these nodes, let's go and check out some of these nodes. Most of it all comes down to is getting some sort of stat, whether it's like getting your main stat, which is like, you know, strength, dexterity, and you get that. And depending on how much you have, there could be some sort of bonus. So it grants a bonus to the nodes. Most of the small nodes are going to be stuff like strength, dexterity, and, um, willpower, basically stats. This one's writing us extra strength. So at the end of the day, what is the complexity with this right here, right? So looking at other nodes, we can see that there's extra strength, extra resistance. Uh, there's a grants fury per kill. So this is basically a resource on barbarian. And once you reach a certain threshold of X amount of main stat, you get some 8% increased maximum fury. This one over here, this is a legendary one. This is the one we're supposed to get excited about. While your fury is above 50%, you deal 30% more damage. So maybe you can have a build where you're going to try to keep up at least X amount of resource or you'll have some sort of condition and it's just more damage at the end of the day. So the scaling in, in terms of like what's shown off here would really lead you to be thinking, well, okay, so as I progress in the end game, I'm just going to get stronger and stronger, which is kind of the same idea of the Paragon system of just doing higher GRs versus if you look at Diablo 2's complexity, when you're starting to get towards like the end game and getting better pieces of gear, getting that enigma or getting certain items that can completely modify your character 
to me are going to be much more exciting than just a stat numerical change, if that makes any sense. So in terms of complexity and what you'd be looking forward to in forms of endgame content, I would want to say that in the current systems that are in the game, it's a little bit shallow and it does have at least the foundation to open up the doors to brand new things. I know this first point is really long, but it's kind of the biggest part of Diablo 4 in terms of my criticism. Now, um, there are some enchantments that you can get on the Sorceress class. It's kind of more tied into what I would consider class identity, but it is a form of a class progression that I really feel like they should talk more about. Um, I think this system is kind of cool though. It's almost a thing that I love about the game and it's in my video because we did drop a video talking about the top eight plus things that I love about Diablo 4. Um, but in terms of this, I would say it's more tied to class identity. So basically what it comes down to is the Sorceress has the ability to choose two skills once you get further in the game to be an enhanced and they are more powerful. So normally with Frostbolt, you just kind of shoot it and it goes, right? But if you enhance it, there's a 50% chance uh, to explode on chilled targets surrounding uh, enemies. It just deals extra damage, but it's 100% against frozen targets. So this basically adds complexity to the point where every skill has a like super version of it. It's a more powerful version of it. The Necromancer has the ability to have your summons and you can modify what the summons actually do. So you can have like certain types of skeletons that maybe do a different type of damage or a uh, mechanic where it would just modify the skill a little bit. I would tie this more to class identity, but this isn't something where I'm like, oh my gosh, this is super exciting like the Paragon board would actually be. Now there's a video that talks more about like Endgame uh, that was really good by Force Gaming, it's talking about the biggest concerns about the game, and I'm looking at this game more as a whole, and this is like the very first point, and I know it's kind of long, uh, but it talks about the uh, forms of like content that we can experience in the game, and in terms of complexity, this all ties down to the very uh, same thing, because you want to get towards the end game to experience like some new mechanic, right, where the Paragon board is towards the end game. Now, looking at the amount of content that we have, and just comparing it to Lost Ark, because Diablo 4 while it still is an isometric action RPG that is looter based, it's more in the MMO genre where you have this world that is shared with other people and some content you have to do with other players. Uh, he made a really good comparison of what is offered in Diablo 4 versus Lost Ark. And you can see that there's not that many things compared to Lost Ark. I know Lost Ark has had more time, so maybe Diablo through time can get to the point of having all these cool brand new things in the action RPG genre. By Nightmare Dungeons, it's just a dungeon. Sometimes you can have modifiers that make it a little bit more difficult. If you played Path of Exile, it's kind of like having uh, these systems where we would have modifiers to make it a little bit harder. Uh, there's also these health ties where we have these areas that we can do like more tough content. Um, there's also these things called uh, Grim Favors that I'll briefly mention here. Uh, it's a very similar system to Diablo 3's bounties. You do an objective, you get a chest, you get a reward. Uh, there are dedicated PvP zones. There's no dedicated PvP, which will be another one of my points uh, later in this video. But it's just basically showing off, that there's world bosses too, but it's basically a boss that comes out and you just kind of hit it until it dies. And you need a large group to do this. You can't realistically do these solo uh, effectively. But it's things that other games have actually already uh, offered. You look at like, you know, Lost Ark with 20 world bosses. Um, it does seem a little bit shallow for the amount of content that is offered. And there isn't anything here that I would say is, wow, oh my gosh, this is brand new to the action RPG genre. Like we have so many different mechanics with let's say Path of Exile league mechanics with each individual league. I know Diablo 4 is in its infancy. We don't even have the game yet. So they're probably gonna add more stuff with seasons and stuff later down the line. Um, mounts were also kind of new, but I feel like a lot of these points come down to, again, one thing, is it brand new in terms of, like, we've never seen mounts in a game before. Honestly, the mount system is a little bit clunky in its current state. Um, you have to call your mount, then click on your mount to actually mount up. You can dismount by using an ability, but it's on an insanely long cooldown. And on top of that, the mount system is kind of clunky because Diablo 4 has a lot of mechanics where you have to cross this rope. You have to jump across these little like tiles. You have to uh, pick up, let's say some sort of herb or something. And the mount just makes it a little bit more clunky in the way that it works. So hopefully they can smooth this out. But it's not like I want to play Diablo 4 because it has mounts. We already have waypoints. I feel like it's just another way for us to have another skin uh, that we can obtain in the game versus like a mechanic where like, oh man, I love these mounts. They're a, a huge, great addition to the game. It was kind of cool to see people jump off of the mount, but uh, overall it's not like a brand new experience. For the game but again this whole first part and the the first thing that i you know hate about the game is that there isn't anything that i'm like oh my gosh i'm super excited about with the exception of the paragon board but again it's so shallow at the infancy uh in the current state that i think that could use a little bit more complexity 
The next thing I want to talk about is actually going to be the runes. So um, they just completely removed runes. I have no idea why they had the system already made. This is shown off from BlizzCon 2019. I actually made a dedicated video to go over all the rune words, how to make the rune word, and the brand new rune system. And it was actually pretty cool. Uh, I'll link the video down below if any of you guys want to check it out. But the system was already finished, and then they decided, let's just go ahead and remove them. I got no idea why they decided to do this. It was one of the coolest things that we had in Diablo 2 for complexity. We had um, the ability to make brand new builds based off of maybe a specific rune word, like an enigma, right? Uh, or like even beasts. Some of these a little bit more obscure, but allowed us to have really fun content where we can turn into a werebear or there's a barbarian helmet uh, that lets you turn into a werewolf. A lot of weird things that are just kind of fun. Uh, hopefully they can add this and maybe some uniques, but uh, there's no rune words, unfortunately unfortunately, in Diablo 4 anymore. Um, perhaps, again, they're maybe saving this for DLC. That's my guess. The next thing I want to talk about is trade in the game. I feel like this is one of the things that I hate the most. This would probably be towards the very top. Um, I'd say maybe like the top three things that I really dislike about Diablo 4 is there is no trade system. Like, I'm not asking for like the same auction house system, but at least that we can trade and interact with other players, uh, I think would be a great addition. I know that they may not want certain websites relisting and selling things, but what we can trade is so limited in the game. We can only trade common magic and rare. Rare may actually be okay though, because you can convert a rare to a legendary, but you cannot trade uniques, you can't trade enchanted items. Um, basically, well, I understand you can't trade like quest items, that'd be kind of weird, but uh, for the most part, there isn't really like a huge uh, incentive to perhaps go into trade in the game. I know for some people, all they like to do in Path of Exile is sit in town and flip products, and it's really cool to see these videos. Uh, but at the end of the day, they want you to play the game, and I get that. But at the same time, the reason why I like trade, and it's in a very, very detailed video, um, this is from GDC. Uh, it's the Game Developers Conference. This is one of the best videos, and I recommend you guys to check it out if you want to if you're a huge fan of action RPGs, they talk about the five pillars of a successful action RPG. And the five pillars are visceral action combat, which Diablo's got. The, this gameplay is really good in Diablo 4, and we have the randomly generated levels. To an extent, there's, like, the whole world has to be static because it's an MMO, it's a shared world, right? But you have these dungeons that are going to be generated with random modifiers, and it's enough to kind of, like, suffice for what they, uh, you know, mention is important to have. We have the randomly generated items, that's totally uh, there. And then the secure online economy, that's the one thing that we're missing. One thing that we do have is the deep character customization, but the secure online economy is very important. And the reason why it's so important, now I'll kind of explain this in a... Um, a reason why. One, people like to find out what's this best item that I can get uh, best in slot. I like being able to min-max my character and progress, even if it's just a small amount of damage. Getting that next upgrade can be huge in a game. And to say that you have to get this item as a drop, for some people, they just don't have the time. There are so many brand new games that come out all the time that are brand new and free. People want to try out other games. And sometimes people want to build a completely different build. I'm sure some of you guys have played Diablo 2 and then you're like, you know what? I'm playing a Cold Sork. I want to try Lightning. And then you have to build up, you know, your character. And then you have to get all of the gear, which... If you've ever tried to build a lightning sorceress, and if you're doing like solo cell found, that is going to be a nightmare to do. But if you had all of your cold sort gear, and you're like, well, I'll go trade it off for, you know, some lightning gear or fire gear, or I want to build a whirlwind barb. I want to trade all of my items to get a brand new character because we're going to have seasons anyways, right? The game's going to rotate. Um, some people will dedicate more time if they know that they don't have to basically re-gear up another character and spend, you know, hundreds of hours. I'm not sure how long it's going to take, but in D2, you could definitely spend hundreds of hours if you're doing solo self found, right? Uh, but it depends on the rarity of these items. Like in Diablo 3, in a good weekend, you could basically fully gear up a character, right? But in uh, Diablo 4, I don't know if that's going to be the case. If it is, well, then you're just going to be able to grind relatively quick. Uh, but I think trade uh, for uh, other reasons exists, and I think it's a great thing. And I want to use this and kind of demonstrate it via a primal item, right? Primal items are supposed to be super, super rare. If you get a primal convention of elements, you're pretty excited, right? That's one of the best in slot for most classes. Now, unfortunately, if you cannot trade it, let's say you get a second copy of it, it's basically as the same value, right? If you were to disenchant it for Forgotten Souls, it's on the same levels as a Blackthorns, which no one really cares about, right? You get in those primal Blackthorns. And if you could trade your second copy of your Convention of Elements, or maybe you, your class, for whatever reason, you cannot equip Convention of Elements, you got to put it inside of the Kanai's Cube, right? 
then getting a secondary convention of elements does not hold its value. And that's where it goes back to the GDC thing that I was talking about, where you have to have a secure online economy as one of the pillars to a good action RPG is to be able to have items that drop that hold value. Like if you played Path of Exile, you get two mage bloods. Well, you could trade one, right? You can get a whole, you get several characters by trading that one super rare item. And if the item doesn't hold value, it is not as exciting if it drops when you already have either the same copy of it or one that might have better stats. It's the same value as a drop of the same, uh, I guess, rarity in the sense where like, you know, we have legendary and you disenchant it for just some small amount of dust. It doesn't have the same weight or excitement uh, because it's like, once you get to a certain point in Diablo 3, a lot of the things that drop, you're just like, okay, whatever. It, it doesn't have that excitement, but if it, like a super rare, like primal dropped and uh, you could trade it for maybe another primal, you you get ex more excited, right? It actually has longer le uh, longevity in terms of retention rate uh, than a shorter one, I would say, in terms of long-term. Okay, so now that we're done with the, the trade, let's talk about, uh, I believe we're on number four, uh, or let's talk about the additions of the game. So I'm actually super okay with having different editions of the game to have cosmetic rewards, or uh, maybe you can play the beta. What I'm not really a fan of, if you go all the way down, is when you have up to four days early access to the game. And remember, this game is going to actually have, um, later on the line, paid expansions. Are paid expansions also going to give people early access uh, to the game? I think that's a little bit unfair. If this was just, uh, you know, access to the beta, which, you know, some of the editions have, um, I think that that's understandable. Or getting cosmetics, I'm understandable with cosmetics. But to give players the ability to play the game early if you spend more money, it just doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't feel like it has the players at the best interest. Now, I'm hoping that they can stay true to their word where there's going to be no pay to win. Uh, I'm not going to talk too much about pay to win because they said there's not going to be any it's just going to be cosmetic for the game but you cannot tell me that getting you know days early access to a game for leaderboards and other things i know they mentioned that i believe seasons uh won't start at the the start of the launch of the game but at the same time uh getting four days early access to the game as a content creator anyone that's excited to play the game it's basically like you gotta buy the more expensive one because if some of your friends get it and you don't you're going to be super far behind it's almost uh, capitalizing on the fear of missing out uh being able to play but who knows maybe the servers are going to be so stressed you guys remember er, er, was it error 37 for d3 but at the same time I, this is the one thing i'm not okay with um in terms of things that i hated about you know the diablo 4 and i'm sure that this is more on the publishers than the game developers which is something uh, for like, another topic but uh, i think that there should not be editions of the game where if you buy it you get a play early um like the full the full game early if it's beta that's more understandable but uh next up uh the other thing that i really dislike about the game is there is no offline support and i'm a little bit more lenient on like okay i get it it's got to be a game where we have these world bosses you can't do those offline but can we have mods in the game there are so many diablo mods heck some of you guys maybe follow me specifically for maybe the reaper of souls diablo 2 mod uh median xl or even the hell 2 for diablo 1 i love diablo mods this is something that i i feel like it's kind of a staple on my channel to check out all these new mods i mean the diablo hell 2 added 29 classes in diablo 1 um and like i even killed ubers with a uh, chargeable like I, I was doing crazy things uh with some mods and i think that this is a really good feature in diablo um just in general in any action rpg any video game mod support to me is very important uh, offline i know some people really like to have that and i think it'd be cool to have offline support as well but specifically having mod support really adds longevity to your game when we're on the season towards the very end i mean it could be months until we get new uh forms of content in the game and the mod would still allow the game to be able to have a set second life cycle when we have you know an off season or it's a really long in between we're waiting um for some new content uh, i think mods would be great for the game but this is something where yeah i'm not expecting this to actually happen uh, at the end of the day because it compromises security of the game which is something they mentioned with d2r because i was really excited about d2r when they said yeah uh mods are going to be a thing and then later they unfortunately had to tell us no sorry no mods so mods would be a uh, that was like the main point of like point number five Number six over here comes down to no real PvP. So this is the arena system that they had. I played the 3v3 arena that they had. This is the 2v2s, but they had an arena system for Diablo 2. This never, or not Diablo 2, Diablo 3. They had an arena system and it was really cool. Like it, it, in the state that I played it in, it was 100% playable. Uh, and I would really love to see Diablo 4 get true PvP. I'm talking unranked, ranked, you queue up and you battle. The current system for ranked, how or not ranked, but the current systems for for Diablo, uh, 
uh, for PvP is there's certain dedicated zones you can go there and people want to do their uh, dailies, right? And their daily is basically to collect these red shards and then you can complete it and you get like these grim favors. Some people, you don't even have to play PvP to do the PvP in the game, which I know it doesn't really make sense, but you have to collect these things in zones where people can battle each other. And you just feel kind of mean going up to people that are trying to turn in like their rewards and you just kill them and take theirs um, versus like a queued PvP system where it feels fair because people basically do a rat system where they wait for you to turn it in and they hide. They wait for you to use some abilities on monsters and then they jump in on you. That's the way it currently works and doesn't feel very, uh, I guess, uh, respectable. I want to go into to PvP where like they're fighting, I'm fighting uh, in, in an equal ground. Uh, that's what I would love to see because this adds a lot more life cycle to the longevity of the game. Uh, again, during off season or just, you know, people might buy the game specifically for PvP. I remember I used to play Diablo 2 just for PvP once I reached max level. That's all I really wanted to do. Like as many levels as I required because getting level 100 in D2 is still pretty dang hard. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think this would be a really cool system if they added like a dedicated real PvP support for the game. So that was my, my six point. My, um, other point over here um, really comes down to uh, the skill complexity, which uh, I kind of want to talk about. Like if we go to, uh, let's go to, uh, I want to type this in like Torchlight Infinite Skill. So if we looked at like a skill, this is kind of similar to uh, the system that we have in uh, Path of Exile where you have like a six link skill. So how it works in Diablo 4, um, Diablo 4 skill system is basically you choose a skill, you add more points into it, and you can get like two different modifiers, which kind of would be equivalent to like a rune system. Um, I feel like the skill complexity could get a lot more complex. Like you should be able to get a skill right here. Like if we take this one, for example, you have your main skill whirlwind, then we can modify it with like other modifiers. And how it works in Diablo 4 in its current state is each legendary piece of gear can modify your skill. But how it works in terms of the playstyle is you want to rotate through most of your skills in the game. So it's a more active playstyle versus you have your resource generator and you have your resource spender. There is technically that in the game, but it wants you to have a active playstyle where you're basically using all of your skills, um, which then you get your legendaries and then you're still going kind of back to one skill because some of them can modify the skill in one individual way versus allowing each individual gear to have its special ability. And then we have the like, I don't know, socket system like we have in Path of Exile or Torch Light Infinite where we can modify the skill through other means, which could be a, another form of complexity at the end of the day. But I think, um, this one over here could be modified in the game, maybe with future expansions or whatever they decide to do uh, in the game. And um, another thing that I would like to see in the game, because I think that this could be a very interesting point, is uh, the mercenary system. The mercenary system is completely gone. We had it in D2 and D3, and these modify the game a lot. The D2 mercenaries, I mean, you can have a mercenary kill an Uber. You can have the mercenaries really do work. It's more for solo play, and this is one thing where I, I, I kind of hate the game that because they don't allow you to play solo, um, in a sense, you have to basically party up with people for most forms of like the later content in the game. Um, you can't do like world bosses, although maybe with a mercenary, you should be able to do it. Uh, I think mercenaries were a really cool way for you to always feel like there's someone there in the game. I know some people like to kind of play solo with no mercenary, but I think it added another layer of depth that Diablo 4 is missing compared to its predecessors, except for Diablo 1 technically didn't have a mercenary system. Um, but I think that this was a really cool system and I really wish that they would add mercenaries uh, to the game. Maybe it could be added later in future expansions. Uh, I think that that would be a cool feature. Um, another uh, thing that I briefly want to touch upon is the talisman system in Diablo 3 that was already existing, um, which was a system, if you guys didn't know, Diablo 3 had a like an earlier version of what would be considered the charms if you applied the last epoch. You basically have these uh, little things. It's a it's an inventory just for charms. They call it a talisman system. Uh, maybe certain ones in combination would do certain things, but it wasn't really flushed out and they never came to see the light of day. But I think this system uh, in future DLCs or expansions would be really cool. I'm talking about further end game, uh, maybe even gear slots, like we have hero traits in um, Torchlight Infinite. But basically what I'm looking forward to seeing is maybe even new gear slots in the game that would be brand new. Um, one excellent piece would be like, you know, we have like the rings and the jewelry. Maybe we could have, I don't know, um, we could have earrings. That could be another form of like another, uh, 
layer of complexity. Just the more stuff that you add in terms of gear slots, the more potential you have for complexity, which is really like uh, the main thing that I would really like to see as well as PVP in the game. But those are the top eight plus things that I hated about the current systems Diablo 4. Some of these, obviously, yes, they could happen. Maybe we can get a trade house that could be built into the game so we can actually, uh, again, trade and a PVP dedicated house could exist. The mod support is the one that I, I, I don't think we'll ever get, but I'm very hopeful in the future that maybe with later expansions and DLCs, uh, maybe that will come out later. But uh, anyways, those are the top eight plus things that I hated about the current systems, but feel free to go ahead and check out the video that I recently dropped talking about the eight plus things that I love about this game. As I'm a huge fan of the game at the end of the day, and we will definitely be playing all the Diablo games uh, on the channel as the year continues. But um, hopefully some of these will see some change. Uh, but anyways, if you guys enjoyed the video, drop a like on it if you're new here, hit subscribe to the bell and let me know what you hated about Diablo 4, whether you've played the beta or if you have seen some gameplay, what are the things that you uh, kind of want to see see in the, the future. But take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.